Welcome back, Sasha23 here, back again with some knife therapy. And before I get started, if you like this video, please drop a thumbs up on it, it helps out the channel a whole bunch. If not, thumbs down also works. And if you like knife content and you're not already, smash that subscribe button with the bell notification so you don't miss any of the content and a giveaway that's coming up pretty soon. As soon as I hit 10K, we will be giving away some stuff. I already have one awesome sponsor. That's all you get to see. I will do an official uh, video for the giveaway once I get too close to or once I reach 10,000 subscribers. But today, the video is on my two... I had two Amazon Knife of the Month picks uh, segment that I brought back. I used to do this a long time ago. The first one in the Amazon Knife of the Month pick was this Bastion uh, Talon. The video should be uh, live on this one. And uh, definitely go check this one out if you want to see how this one did. And today's knife is a fixed blade. Comes, it's the Holtzman gorilla survival bushcraft neck knife yeah, it's a mouthful but right off the back i was i was very uh impressed the packaging was nice and you know that that's not everything if, if the knife's junk then who cares about the packaging but that's just an added bonus <coughs> um you get the knife you get a kydex sheath that is really really nice Look at that. Nice positive retention. No rattle whatsoever. You have a thumb push off, uh, thumb ramp right there to push off on there. Um, you get a ferro rod holder with a small little ferro rod. It does actually work. I striked it. You do have a 90 degree spine on here that is sharp enough to uh, scrape a ferro rod. I'm no bushcrafter outdoorsman, but it will work in a pinch. Um, and you also get this diamond plate. Uh, this is one thing I wish they would have left off because, you know, the way I'm going to be using it, you know, either strapped to a go bag or something like that. I don't want to scratch it on everything, but whatever. I didn't really try it. It's very rough. Uh, you do have a drainage hole on the Kydex. So nice little uh, Kydex sheath. Not super thin, but not the thickest either. But for $30, which that's what this knife cost if i didn't say thirty dollars and um before we get into this knife any further let's let's break off into the cutting footage just so y'all can see how well or how terrible this knife really does so i'll be right back all right we're gonna test the factory edge i think it came pretty darn sharp from what i remember let's see yeah screaming sharp on this saber grind All right, this thing sliced pretty darn amazing. And even with that small handle, the, the thickness right there helped me with that three finger grip for it to get a nice uh, purchase on it. See how the edge is faring now. Still seems good. Okay, we're gonna test the air goes on this Pond 2x4. Just doing some, some slicing cuts and uh, some more pressure cuts. All right, I think this little knife did uh, fairly well. Comfortable for three finger grip. Like I said, this, this bulbous uh, handle right here really helped me to hold on to it uh, well. And I was taking nice deep bites into the wood. Oh, let me wipe this off my pants. Try it again. Yep, still pretty good. Okay, we're gonna cut out a few different materials. Uh, some thick saddle leather right here. Um, some denim, rolled up denim. Some rubber gasket material for a garage door. Two types of water tubing, very dense, half inch right here and one inch with uh, some of that braided nylon in it. And some 3 8 inch bungee. 
we'll get started with the leather first. All right, uh, I'd say overall it did pretty well, especially for that low saber grind uh, and such a short handle. <laughs> I realized that a few of the knives that I tested so far today were kind of struggling on this denim right here is because <laughs> this was the ends of the denim with all the pocket material and all that stuff. So had a good bit more material to go through. Uh, let's see how this edge is holding up. And also, it did want to bind up on this thicker tubing. It was catching the edges of the knife. So that thickness behind the edge. Oh, that's still good. Let's see. Yeah, that's still so sharp. Let's see. Got one hang up right there. And let's see. Got one right there. I mean, it's not as sharp as it was in the beginning, but it's still nice and sharp. All right, we're going to try to get about 10 cuts with this uh, half-inch twisted sisal rope. We did, went ahead and did 20 because... It was performing pretty well, slicing pretty well. Let's see if it still has a decent edge. Yeah, it's got some some hangups, but at this price point, I call that probably good. Right there, right back here, right there is where the hangups at, and all that little area in the front where I was cutting that with. I could probably hit it on the strop though and bring it back. Oops. Yeah, right from here to here. Still got a working edge on it though. All right, we're going to attempt to get through these three copper wires using a rubber mallet. This is considered abuse, so don't do it too nice unless you want it to void your warranty. went through very easily. Let's see. I'm not seeing any crazy damage if there is any. I see where I did it right there. It's got, I mean, minimal damage for such a cheap knife. I've had a lot more expensive knives not fair so well. Let's see how it cuts. All right. That was a quick cut. Let's see. Slow cut. Yeah, right there. There's a hang up. Other than that, it's good to go. Alrighty, we're going to do some edge impact testing on this aluminum bar stock right here. We're gonna strike it three times and see how that edge holds up. We'll try to hit it somewhere in that middle section, about right up in there. Took some chunks out of the aluminum. One, two, and three. And let's see how well did it do there. That's from the original right here from the copper wires and kind of see yeah let's see how it's cutting yeah okay. 
all that good. Once again, for the price, yep, yeah, all good to go. Alrighty, I hope y'all enjoyed that cutting footage. I don't know about y'all, but I was absolutely blown away by the performance of this little $30 knife. Uh, we'll take a closer look at it. You have a uh, satin finished drop point blade with a saber grind on it. You have this flat spine that is a 90 degree spine. You can see where I scraped on the ferro rods and I was actually able to uh, strike some sparks. I'm not gonna do it right here because I don't wanna light my table on fire or put burn marks in it. Uh, you have their logo right there, the Gorilla and the Steel, which is D2. Um, interesting choice, but um, it did fairly well. You can see there was no major damage. You can see some dulling right up in here from the copper wire, and I, I don't really see where I was hitting the aluminum. I mean, maybe one of those is from aluminum, but that's pretty much the extent all this right here is from the copper wire and banging the edge up against that aluminum rod. So I had much more expensive knives fail that test miserably. So I got to give that a, a, a thumbs up on this one. Uh, <clears throat> wait, what was I going to say? Oh, and the, the overall look of the knife, I think it looks nice. Um, you got this nice, thick G10 scale, black G10, that's pretty smooth. It, it started out as peel ply, but you can see they knocked that off, and they did a great job. Look at that. Completely rounding over the, uh, scales right here. So you still have this flat right here, but they, they did a great job of going all the way to the edge so you don't have any hard edges. You got this nice well executed uh orange liners for high visibility so if you drop it you you should be able to see it look at that the liners i mean the the scales are perfectly even the finishing like throughout there's no high spots there's no catching these are removable scales you know that that costs extra money to do that you know that's why you see a lot of them with pin construction uh, you do have a lanyard hole right here that does fit 550 paracord. Now, I, I, I know I didn't do the specs yet, but <laughs> let's do those now so you can have an idea of how small this knife is because it's, it's, it is on the small side. You have a total length of 7 and 8 inches. You have a blade length of 2 and 7 eighths inches, so it's right under 3 inch. Uh, you have a grip area from right up in here to the back of around 3 and 8 inches. You have a pretty thick uh, thickness in the scales of 0.67. Your average is a half inch, so this is a good bit above average. Your blade stock is 0.12, and the thickness behind the edge is around 25 thousandths, and my particular one is sharpened at 18 degrees per side. Um, <clears throat> Even though this is a small, you know, a small, they call it neck knife, but the weight of this blade, uh, I wouldn't necessarily carry this as a neck knife. It's a little too heavy. It'd be kind of like carrying uh, Essie Azula or, I don't know, something in that nature. It's it's just a lot. I mean, for me, whenever I think of neck knife, I usually think of like a skeletonized or paracord wrap knife that's thin, lightweight, and I don't really feel it. You would definitely feel this on your neck. Let me see just the knife itself without the sheath. We'll go grams first, 116 grams, and four ounces. That's pretty, pretty, you know, it's, that's that wouldn't be anything clipped to my pocket, but uh, around my neck, I would definitely notice this. It would be, you know, slapping up against you. Then you, if you have it in the sheath, you then also have this diamond texture on the outside that would be rubbing against you and, you know, all this stuff too. So for me, it's set up a lot better for a pack or this is actually probably going to stay in my shop to do, you know, things that I wouldn't want to do with some, some more expensive knives. And <clears throat> I think that's the, the best, uh, you know, best idea for this knife as a, as a good beater fixed blade, something that you don't have to worry about closing on you because it's a fixed blade, something that's full tang, 
Um, if you do the bushcraft type things, you got this the sharp spine. Uh, this thing came ridiculously sharp. It was popping hairs right out of the box. Uh, and, I mean, from the test, it did pretty darn good. Uh, at, at $30, I can't complain about the performance of this knife in, in the least. Not at all. Uh, the fit and finish is top notch. <clears throat> I just may try one, another one of their fixed blades. Uh, they have me intrigued at the moment. Uh, let's see. Let's, let's do some size comparisons so you can get an idea. If maybe, let's say if you have an SE Azula, the Azula is going to be a good bit longer. You, with the, the one cool thing about the Azula is you have that full size handle. That's one thing I've always liked about the Azula. But if you look, you put these, let's put these, uh, edge to edge, you have pretty, yeah, you have just about the same exact uh, edge length, but you just don't have the full length handle. I can get an easy four finger grip on this Azula. Love this, one of the most comfortable uh, little fixed blades. And they call this a neck knife too, I think, but this is also, you know, the this one is feels heavier than the Azula, I'm not sure. I did that polish a long time ago to thin this out. So don't pay attention to that. And also the Zula comes with this plastic. Now this is American made, so I understand. This one comes with this injection molded plastic that I really don't like. You can buy aftermarket ones for it. Um, here's another one, another uh, cheap beater. This is the Schrade SCHF 57. Uh, picked this one up to go in my EDC, uh, battle the EDC fixed blades you know, to have on the budget end. So it's pretty much the identical size of the um, this charade. And we have the CRKT Spew, which is also very close in size. I will say, besides the thickness, I mean, this one's way thicker than this, but you have about the same blade length as the Spew and the same handle length, you know, very close. This one is probably the closest, except this, let me just show you, hold on, move this view out of the way, let me just show you the difference, look at that, you can almost fit the entire scale and the tang in the liners on this knife itself, so I mean, you got a lot of big old thickness difference, which on a small knife, that really matters, because it really feels the hand, I didn't feel like I was going to lose control of the knife, even though I have like a three and a half finger grip on there. If I throw a lanyard on there, I would probably have a, a even better grip. So overall, I think if you're looking for a good EDC beater fixed blade, you really can't go wrong for $30 with this. I would definitely pick one up if, if you're in the market for that or if you like the way this one looks and you like, you know, small fixed blades to put in a a go bag or something like that that's decent quality and um, you don't have to worry about breaking the bank you know for a knife that might sit in your truck or stay strapped to a pack or something like that because that's that's what this one's gonna be for me even though it's in D2 I I've already tried out a new little method for here in the south I picked up some flits ceramic uh, coating clear coat and I want to try that out. I heard it works pretty well. I sprayed this one down. I'm going to do some corrosion testing on this to be the guinea pig. So there you go. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. Like I said, if you haven't checked out the Bastion Knives Talon uh, review and testing, go check this one out because this one really shocked me as well. Um, this one shocked me even more. And let me know what you think about this series. If y'all want me to keep it going, I will pick up two more knives next month and we'll, we'll keep it going. All right, guys and girls, I hope everybody's having an absolute wonderful day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.